Okay, let's talk about powers and exponents. And if you're studying algebra at any level, you're going to need to know how to do problems like this. So what we have here is a fraction. And of course, we have some powers and exponents and all kinds of stuff going on. And we want to simplify this expression. Okay, so that's going to be the topic of this video. Now, if you think you can do this, go ahead and pause the video and uh, really can't put your answer in the comment section. It's difficult to uh, put in powers. You could use it um, here. If, I, if you wanted to put, like, say, x to the fifth power, if you want to put this into the comment section, a good way of doing that, you can write x and then put this uh, symbol. I don't know if that you could do that symbol in the comment section. Um, maybe you can. You can try to do that. So you can put x, this upside down v, and then 5. So if it allows you to do that, that's how you would express x to the fifth power. That's one way of doing it. But anyways, uh, if you feel like you can do this, just go ahead and pause the video and uh, work on this for a minute or two. I want to tell you right now that um, there's, not, there's one right answer. However, there's different approaches to get to that answer. That's, what's, that's the neat thing about working with powers and exponents is that you can use different rules uh, to work on this problem. But you can, well, let's kind of show you uh, this way. So here is our problem. Here is the answer. There's one destination, but you can go this way, you can go this way, you can go this way. So one student's work, okay, they might be using one set of uh, uh, rules and approach one way. Another student might be using uh, equivalent rules or uh, other type of rules, and another student would use another type of uh, approach, uh, but you would all get to the same answer. So when you see my work, what I guess I'm getting at here is if you didn't do... Um, you know, this work exactly like the way I did it, don't worry about it, okay? As long as you got the right answer, that's what counts. So I'm going to get into this in uh, one second, but we are going to review, by the way, the rules of powers and exponents. We're going to quickly review that, and then we're going to tackle this problem. Okay, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are struggling in mathematics, maybe you just feel like you're not getting enough math instruction, or maybe you're not really understanding your teacher's teaching style. Whatever the case is, I've been teaching math for decades. I really focus on trying to uh, break things down in bite-sized pieces so anybody can master mathematics. So I really try to teach this stuff in a clear and understandable way. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Um, if you're studying for any test that has a math, a math section on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many, many other type of exams that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have an excellent homeschool math program you definitely might want to check out. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic just yet. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But just know this, if you want a uh, great grade in mathematics, you have to take great math notes. There's just no way around it. All right, so here is our problem. Again, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and work on this and kind of see what you know or how far you can kind of take this problem, uh, that would be, and I think, a good use of this video. But let's go into the rules for powers and exponents. So when you uh, study algebra, you got to um, master these rules, all right? So these are the rules of working with powers and exponents. Let's just quickly review something here. Um, if I have 2 to the 5th, okay, this whole thing is a power, okay? I want to make sure you got your the right terminology here. The whole thing together is a power, okay? Now, this bigger part, the, the, this, uh, the bigger number we write or the bigger variable this part of the power is called the base, okay? That's the base. And then this little number up here, okay, is called the exponent, all right? So when we're talking, when we're talking about a power, a power has a base and it has an exponent, and collectively together, we're talking about a power, okay? All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and look at these rules for powers and exponents. So uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm curious if um, how many of you know these rules. If you're taking algebra, if you already have taken algebra, you should know some, well, you should know all these rules. But go ahead and um, think about this for a second. So I have a to the m times a to the n. What does that equal to? Okay, let's start with our first rule. 
So what's going on here? Well, we have a power being multiplied by another power. We're going to be very precise here, and the bases are the same. Okay, so when you when we're multiplying powers and the bases are the same, notice this variable a and a is indicated in a situation like two to the fifth times two uh, to the third power. So I'm multiplying where the bases are the same. Okay, so what is the rule? Well, that's going to be a to the m plus n. Okay, so you add the exponents. When we're multiplying powers and the bases are the same, we're going to add the exponents. So in this case here, we would have 2 to the 8th power, or 5 plus 3. Okay, so that's how that works, um, this particular rule. And with that being in mind, I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of these rules. Again, if you want to really study this stuff you know, thoroughly and learn it, a couple uh, suggestions. I do have additional videos on powers and exponents in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, um, but uh, I really teach this comprehensively in my, my algebra courses. All right, so let's go into our second rule. So we're multiplying powers again. The bases are the same. We're going to add exponents. Now, if we're dividing powers and the bases are the same, okay, what are we going to do? What's well, going to be a to the m minus n? Okay, we're going to subtract, and we're going to start. This m is going to be first, and then we're going to subtract away this uh uh, exponent just like this. Now let me go back over here to our first rule. If I had 2 cubed times uh, 4 to the 7th, well that's a bad example, 5 to the 7th power, okay, can we do anything here? No, because the bases are uh, different, okay, so we can't apply any rule. So same thing with division, what you're really focusing in here on um, with uh, multiplication and division is the bases are the same. So if I have 2 to the 8th divided by 2 cubed, that's going to be 2 to the a minus 3. Okay, so we're going to subtract our exponents this way. But again, you have to have the same bases. All right, so let's move on to our next rule. a to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over a to the 1st. I have whole videos on negative exponents. This is something that students typically get confused. Actually, let's do it this way. The actual the general rule is this. Uh, a to the negative n is 1 over a to the n. That's the way we would want to write that. Of course, I can use negative 1, but this is the actual rule right there. All right, how about a power to a power? Something like 2 cubed to the fifth. That's this rule. Okay, we have a power to some ex outside exponent. Well, that's just going to be equal to a to the m times n. You just distribute that outside exponent to the inside exponent. So in this case, this would be 2 to the 15th, all right, 5 times 3. All right, how about this uh, situation? We have two powers to some other outside exponent. Well, we still just distribute that outside exponent to both of these. So this would be a to the mc. Uh, to the b to the n c. So let me give you an example of that. All right, that would be something like uh, 2 cubed times 5 squared uh, to the fourth power. Okay, so I would take that 4, multiply it by that exponent, so that would be 2 to the 12th power. And remember, you're not adding, you're multiplying. And then here, this would be uh, 5 to the 8th power. Okay. So that's how this rule uh, works there. And then a to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, that means anything to the 0 power. Okay, so it could be something crazy like x plus y to the 0 power. Guess what the answer is? It is always going to be 1. All right, so these are the, uh, the rules of uh, powers and uh, exponents. you got to know these rules because you're going to use these rules in different ways. Now, let's get to our problem now. And... I'm going to show you uh, the work. I'm going to show you my work. Okay, but here's the deal. When you're looking at this, there's different ways we can look at this problem. We can use uh, uh, product rules or quotient rules. We can use, you know, different rules. As long as we're using a proper rule, that's what counts. So let me go ahead and show you what I did here. So uh, first thing I'm going to simplify is this numerator. Okay, I have all this uh, to this outside exponent. So how am I going to deal with this? Well, this is 2 to the first right there, okay? So this is going to be 2. I have to multiply uh, this 2 by all these powers. So that's going to be 2 to, the, uh, 2 to the first times 2, or 2 squared, or 4, okay? So that's how I got a 4 right there. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 
So I'm going to have x to the 6, okay? And then I'm going to have 2 times 5, or y to the 10th. So that's my first uh, move here um, that I'm going to make. So I'm going to just uh, deal with this outside exponent. Now I can take a look at uh, this problem, you know, uh, at you know, in its current form, right? In, in in this particular way. Now, here's the thing: I have quotients. So a lot of you are thinking, well, I can do the division rule. Yeah, you can do the division rule, but you can also do some other things as well. And if you don't fully understand this, uh, you're going to need additional practice on like the negative exponent. Uh, properties, etc. But I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can go. And of course, I'm going to show you the final answer. So as long as you get the final answer, that's what counts. Okay, so at this point, here is our setup. Uh, here's our problem. We're going to continue it on right here. But now notice we have like numeric values right here in this fraction. So go ahead and simplify 4 over 10. We can reduce that down to 2 fifths. Okay, 2 goes into 4, 2. And 2 goes into 10, 5. So we want to go ahead and reduce those fractions. Now, what I'm going to do right here, see this x to the 6? I have x to the this, uh, negative 10. I'm going to uh, put this x to the negative 10 up into the numerator. And when I do that, the power or the sign changes of the exponent. This is very, very important. Okay, This is a illustration of working with negative uh, exponents. So if I... I can write my, um, right now in its current form, x to the negative 10 is down in the denominator. I could just put this whole thing up here, but when I move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, the sign changes to a positive value, okay? Now let's suppose um, I had this x to the negative 7 in the numerator. Well, I could just rewrite this down in the denominator, but the sign changes. So that's what would become x to the uh, positive 7. So if you're not really quite understanding this negative rule, I have additional, um, this negative exponent rule, I have additional uh, videos on this. Again, I teach all this in, comprehensively in my algebra courses, but this is a rule that you're, that confuses students, but it's an excellent um, rule to know because I'm thinking to myself, oh, I got this x to negative 10. How about I scoot this thing upstairs into the numerator? And when I do that, it's going to become positive. And the reason why I did that is because, look, now I have x to the 6 times x to the 10th. These are the same bases, so I know I can just add these up. That will be x to the 16th. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'll deal with the y's here in a second. But let's go down and see the result of uh, doing this, x to the 6 times x to the 10th. I have that, that as x to the 16th. All right, so at this point, I'm saying to myself, well, I got y to the 3rd and y to the 10th. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? If I have y to the 10th, that's like having 10 y's in the numerator. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's what I have right here, and I have three y's in the denominator, okay? So you can cross-cancel 3 and 3, okay? And what am I left with? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is an illustration of the quotient rule. It's basically just, you know, uh, a shortcut way of not having to write out all these um, bases like this, uh, we can just see, okay, we have y to the 10th, we have y to the 3rd, so I can use um, the division rule and subtract the exponents. So that would be 10 minus 3, which of course is going to be 7, and we can see that kind of visually right here. Now, I could also move this up. I can use the negative rule and then use the product uh, negative exponent rule, and then I can use product rules. Again, this is what I'm talking about. You could use different rules to get to the same destination. But uh, let's go ahead and just wrap this up because we are going to be done. We have 2 to the 5th, okay, that we already had that because we had uh, our 4 and 10, which we simplified. We already talked about how we got x to the 16th, and then we can see here we have y to the 7th. And this is the final answer. Now, you are completely done, okay, when you can't go any further and you don't have any negative exponents. Okay, that's a typical rule. So if you had like a negative right there, you would need to address that and move that down in the denominator. So typically your uh, most uh, math teachers are going to say, okay, you are, you know, fully simplified this expression when you can't go any further and there is no uh, negative uh, exponents. All right, so 
Whether you used my path to get to this destination or use another path, as long as you understand these rules, and if you got this right answer, well, that is pretty awesome. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice happy face with a good old 1985 flat top uh, haircut, okay, and an A plus and 100%. That was such a great haircut. I don't, unfortunately, uh, see that around anyway, and those of us that sported that haircut around in the 80s probably don't have as much hair as we did. Uh, but maybe some of us uh, do, but uh, me, I'm like borderline. <laughs> Anyways, nice job, okay? But here's the deal. If you found this problem difficult, well, this actually is not that difficult of a problem when we're talking about powers and exponents. It's a lot more challenging stuff you're going to need to know in algebra. you got to work on it because, uh, you know, powers and exponents and all this stuff, this is everywhere in algebra and beyond. So you got to get this down. Again, you want to start by learning and mastering all these rules, but you're not going to get better at math unless you practice. you got to do a ton of problems. And the great thing with my math program is I have tons and tons of problems, a wide variety of problems, basic to advanced uh, uh, problems where you can see the actual steps, step by step by step. And you need to just not do one or two of these problems and be like, okay, I know this, you know, uh, I'm already good to go. I don't need to do any more. No, that's not the case. Remember, math, you're developing a skill, okay? Just like you know, uh, hitting a baseball or shooting a basketball, whatever the case is, you have to practice a lot more than you think uh, you do in order to really, uh, you know, uh, master a particular skill. But hopefully this was a good start for you. And if that is the case, go ahead and smash that like button. That would be excellent for me. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, all the way up to calculus. So, um, if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of videos that can help you out. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.